Good day, beautiful people of the earth. Today, we are going to talk about Mr. Atheist. So, this is Mr. Atheist's channel. Again, I'm not going against atheism. I'm not going for religion. I just wish to show the two polarities, the, the two extremes that both kind of exhibit. And he is kind of making fun of this guy who is talking about creationism and he's making fun of it with evolution so let's hear what he has to say parentheses of parameters and parentheses parameter of parentheses is that like redundancy of redundancies oh i'm already so into this uh, let's do this let's do this for one simple reason it was never observed so to be clear science itself is a process it's the scientific process Evolution via this process has been observed and it's been demonstrated. So it absolutely is science. In fact, you could argue that lots of things are science that have been debunked because they were debunked via science. To say it is a fact of science would be correct for evolution. It wouldn't be correct for those other things. That's why it's not science. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. One man's theory. Okay, first of all, it is not one man's theory. One could argue that the theory started with one and really two men because there was another man on the other side of the world coming up with the exact same theory at the same time as Darwin. However, it is not one man's theory. And this is an important point. People use the word theory incorrectly within this context. In science, a theory is something that actually explains a fact. If there was a hierarchy, a theory would be on top. Laws are parts of theories. It is the best thing. So the fact of evolution is described by the theory of evolution. Just like the fact of gravity is described by the theory of gravity. Or the fact of a heliocentric universe is defined by the heliocentric theory. Or facts about germs are described by germ theory. So yes, evolution is a theory and proudly so, like gravity, like heliocentric, like germ theory. Theory does not mean hypothesis. Hypothesis is the word you're looking for. Hypothesis is an educated guess, a person positing a way that something could be explained. For example, intelligent design is a hypothesis. It never made it to theory because it did not survive the scientific method and has been debunked. A few times. Here the word few means a whole friggin' frick ton. Now let me show you how much faith it really takes to believe in evolution. You want me to believe that in some accidental cosmic bang... I feel bad that I'm cutting in so much, I really do, but... So, there are some things that he says that I agree with him on, and some things that I do not agree with him on. Let's just go to Google, scientific theory versus law. In general, a scientific law is the description of an observed phenomenon. It doesn't explain why the phenomenon exists or what causes it. The explanation of a phenomenon is called a scientific theory. It is a misconception that theories turn into laws with enough research. So now that we went into this article, here it explains the difference between hypothesis and theory. Hypothesis, theories, and laws are rather like apples, oranges, and whatever that other word is. One cannot grow into another, no matter how much fertilizer and water are offered. According to the University of California, a hypothesis is a limited explanation of a phenomenon. A scientific theory is an in-depth explanation of the observed phenomenon. A law is a statement about an observed phenomenon or a unifying concept. Here's the real difference between theories, hypothesis, and law. And just because a theory goes very in-depth and maybe has been disproven, maybe has not, does not make it a scientific fact. Down here, right here, it talks about the difference between scientific laws and scientific facts is a bit harder to define, though the definition is important. Facts are simple, basic observations that have been shown to be true. Laws are generalized observations about a relationship between two or more things in the natural world. The law can be based on facts and tested hypothesis, according to NASA. 
For it to be a scientific fact, for evolution to be a scientific fact, it has to be proven, it has to be a fact, it has to have all of the qualifying factors. Evolution is not a fact because we do not know how the first life started. We do not know how the first single-celled organism came into existence. There are theories on this, but there are no facts because we have not actually done it, or practiced it, or observed it. It's never happened. That's why evolution is still a theory for all of you scientists out there and atheists. Just to give an example of how scientific theory does not always equal scientific fact, here is a PBS space time YouTube talking about why string theory is wrong. And everybody has heard about string theory. String theory was one of the big scientific theories that was out in the last decade that everybody was kind of looking at, that was very popularized in our culture and our society. And now they are saying, unequivocally, it's wrong. So let's listen to what he has to say. The idea that beauty is a powerful guide to truth in the mathematics of physical theory. String theory is certainly beautiful in the eyes of many physicists, but is it beautiful enough to pursue even if it's wrong? Herman Weil once said, if I have to choose between beauty and truth, I choose beauty. It was in reaction to a rebuke by Einstein. Weil had tried to explain electromagnetism by imposing on Einstein's general theory of relativity the very first gauge symmetry, Weil invariance. Einstein pointed out that the proposal led to some absurd results, and so the idea went down in flames. It just couldn't be true, despite the elegance of the math but sometimes it can be hard to let go of the sense that a beautiful theory must be right. Could this also be the case with string theory? As it happens, Weil's old idea did work when translated to the very particular case of a quantum string, which is part of what got string theory going in the first place. We talked about this in detail in our episode on why string theory is right, which itself was a sequel to our primer on the basics of string theory. In those episodes, we saw some of the remarkable ways that string theory promised to converge on a theory of everything. It seemed so beautiful. The effortlessness of its inclusion of quantum gravity, its promise to unify all particles under one umbrella, and there's also the convergence of many versions of string theory into a single picture with a very specific number of extra dimensions. I'll talk more about that today. So, why, with all of this promise of being so right, do more and more physicists think that string theory is, after all, either woefully incomplete or just plain wrong? This is how, even though things look very good theoretically, they might not be true, even if they are beautiful and they are simple. Another case that I'm going to use to show my point is the origins and evolution of language. I look a lot into language and how language evolved. I've always been interested in it. And this man, he's a doctor, Michael Corbalis. Uh, he's a psychology professor, I believe. And he explains from language how the theory of evolution might not be correct as scientists have perceived it thus far. I'm going to end with this, and I will go into more detail on other things in later videos. I am just conspiracy, and I just wish to conspire with other good people of this planet to leave a better world for future generations than the world we all grew up in. Thank you, and enjoy. And as the last video, I am going to leave links in the description to everything that I have put up on this video. Right hand end of that, a tiny blip in the last seven million years. We evolved, it seems, about 200,000 years ago. And according to Chomsky, language only emerged with about halfway through that span of 200 million years. Sorry, 200,000 years. And I'll show you that. That's where the miracle happened. 
And to me, that doesn't make much sense because you've got all those millions of years of human evolution from when we decided not to be great apes anymore. That it would be offensive, I think, to Charles Darwin, although he's not still around to complain. Um, he argued that any complex organ, like language, or like the liver, or the heart, or the brain, must have evolved through successive, numerous, slight modifications. And if anybody could find an exception to that, that would destroy his theory of evolution. Uh, but uh, Chomsky's theory, then, might be that one case. And if Chomsky is right, then uh, evolutionary theory would be destroyed in Darwin's own terms. I just found this TED Talk and it relates to the video I just made, and so I'm going to record this and put it at the end. There are two types of amino acids that are man-made now, and he will talk about that, kind of tell you a little bit about it, but he also talks about how we can only make semi-synthetic DNA, which means that we cannot just make synthetic DNA. We can manipulate DNA and alter it to make semi-synthetic DNA with science, but we still do not know how to make DNA, and this is why evolution is still a theory and it's not a fact of science, because until we discover how to replicate that process inside of a lab, it won't be science. Take a look. So TED Talk actually stopped me from playing this video where he is talking about the amino acids and developing them. I am just going to put a link to the video in the description. The basis of it is that we cannot create life with our technology right now. And that's it. We haven't done everything that we need to do to prove the theory of evolution inside of a scientific laboratory and so it's still just a theory and that's basically the whole point of the video so the time of semi-synthetic life is here man still cannot create life life is something that we don't fully understand yet just like the theory of the big bang I'm just making these videos once again so that people can have informed decisions to believe whatever they wish to believe. And the only message I have is for everybody to follow your heart.